Hi folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Husqvarna Carpenter's Axe. So we're just going to run through what it is, what it's not, and what you can do with it. So I originally bought this axe from a chainsaw dealer uh, around about the same time that I bought my uh, Husqvarna Forest Axe, which you've, if you've seen any of my videos before, you'll see me talking and using talking about and using this axe. Got them at the same time as they were from a chainsaw dealer at that was about 10 years ago they're pretty cheap um, they've gone up slightly in price now but they're still a, a relatively cheap axe for what you're getting so what you are getting um, it's made in sweden I believe the Husqvarna axes are made by halterfors so it's a swedish made axe forged predominantly by hand it's got a hickory handle and it comes with a leather mask or sheath. So you're starting off with quite a good product at the beginning. Now, although I've had this axe pretty much the same amount of time as the Forest Axe, I've hardly used this one. Um, what I have used it for is some carpentry work. So if where I've been wanting to carve out in the workshop, larger sections, wanted to thin things down, and um, they were all awkward shapes or something like that, then I have actually used this axe. But there are a couple of, well, shortfalls really that I've come across so far with the stock axe. The one is, you know, as usual, a lot of these axes come with quite thick handles, overly thick, and this is no exception. And in this case, you know, if you're using, well, for carpentry purposes, which can include sort of carving activities, you need to be able to use one hand and choked up quite close to the actual head of the axe. And with this thick handle, I always found that I was getting really fatigued in my hand. So that was a big, big enough problem that I just didn't use it. Really, I just needed to thin it out, which is what I'm gonna do. Um, but that was the first issue I had. It's quite a heavy head for such a short handle for just general purpose use. Another thing that you'll notice as well is that the shape of the, the bit, the blade, is very straight compared to other axes. So if you compare it to the forest axe, it's actually got a longer bit and it's dead straight where there's a slight curve to this one. Now this one has got a much longer handle. So you can see the weight and bit length to handle length, the ratio is very different to this one. Now I suspect the reason this blade is so straight is that for carpentry work, it's a bit like a chisel or a plane. If you're using it for that sort of task, you want a relatively straight edge so you can smooth the wood out you don't want it going over curves or round curves so the, one of the reasons you'd want a, a broad straight edge is really for accuracy that does present a bit of a problem for general purpose use now i have seen people using these axes or modifying them putting them on longer handles or whatever and using them for for bushcraft or wood woods based activities now I think you can do that, you know, you can make any axe work to do anything you want, really, but um, it's not ideal, I don't think, um, for a couple of reasons. That long straight edge is designed for a very specific purpose, and it doesn't work, I don't think, very well in the more general purpose, felling, limbing, you know, those sorts of tasks. It's not really designed for that, particularly with a shorter handle. Um, it's not set up very well for that purpose. So Dudley Cook, in his very well-known axe book, he actually does touch on briefly on the edge profile. And his recommendations are that heavily curved bits are not good because they will can slice in or penetrate too deeply into the wood um, in the middle section um, and making it hard to release. But he also says that a bit needs to have some curvature to it on the edges, and that's because... If it sinks in, you need to release it. You need some rocker in, in order to start to free the axe up. Once an axe with such a straight edge is bitten into the wood, it's gonna be very hard to release it from a deep-seated cut. Now, a lot of broad axes or side axes that, you, that are often used in carpentry have a flat edge on one side and then the normal profile on the other, very much like a chisel or a plain blade and they actually would be profiled for one or the other hand. 
and you know those obviously allow you to get very close up to a cut without it tilting away and give you very accurate cuts like a chisel now this one is more general purpose it actually is profiled from both sides like a normal axe so there's a question about how useful that is so i think it's fair to say it's not as useful for bushcraft as a more traditional size or shape blade then you could question is it actually useful for carpentry with a profile like this anyway so the first thing i'm going to do is thin down this handle before i try and use it um, anymore it's just too big your hand gets so tight so quickly and it's just no good so i need to shape it down to suit my hand and that's my first step <laughs> Right, so the handle looks quite different now, been fairly nicely shaped, it's a lot more comfortable in my hand. So I'm just going to apply some linseed oil and then we'll give it a go. Okay, so I've got a piece of seasoned ash here that I'm going to try and square off. So a couple of things I'm noticing. Firstly, it is definitely more comfortable in my hand with a slimmer profile. But secondly, it is giving quite a nice flat cut, even though it's, I don't know if you noticed, but it was glancing out uh, a few times. And I think that's because of that uh, traditional profile and not having a um, side axe profile. So it does glance a little bit, but it is actually cleaving quite well and giving quite a broad flat cut which is kind of what you'd want with timber framing or something like that so definitely does work in that sense but I'm not sure that a side axe wouldn't work better so without too much effort I'm managing to square this off quite quickly so definitely doable um, so I think it's quite a good tool for this type of purpose as I say Possibly not quite as good as a side axe, but um, well, it certainly works. Interestingly, this one didn't bite very well at all into the log from the side bucking. I think it was really hitting the round profile of the log in the middle and it was not sinking in very well. So with the bucky it was glancing so it was flying chips out but it wasn't sinking in very deep so it didn't feel like it was biting very well, it didn't feel very comfortable. And then with the forest axe it was biting really deeply and what I was finding was with, with the bucking not freeing up the chips as well but it was certainly biting a lot more deeply. So it felt definitely more comfortable to use for bucking. Now this isn't the perfect scenario for bucking inside the workshop, but you know, it's good enough for an experiment. This certainly felt a lot more comfortable in that sort of task. So there's a few people out there in the axe community who will, will tell you that the forest axe or boys axe is probably the best all round utility, bushcraft, camping style axe you can get. And you know, I totally agree. The length of handle, the weight and the neutral sort of blade shape. It, it is such a, a great um, axe for general, you know, wood processing tasks. So, but then if you do like carving, um, as I do, so you may go camping and, you know, process all your wood, but you also like to do some carving, then a more dedicated carving axe is quite useful. This handle is a little bit long for carving really and you know it is possibly a bit uncomfortable for one-handed use so it is nice to have a small carving hatchet now 
I guess the best case scenario is you have both. You have that one, which could be carrying in your hand, and this one's in your rucksack. So, you know, that's that's perfect scenario. But if you are wanting to go lighter, one of the thoughts I had was, well, this is a, you know, carving axe in disguise. Um, it's not too long, could go in your rucksack, um, but it's got a big enough bit to maybe do heavier tasks. So that was the thought process I went down when I started looking at this. But I think, in conclusion, that I've found, you know, the bit geometry is not really going to be suited for a lot of timber processing tasks. It is still quite a heavy head um, for one-handed use. I think the handle is going to be a bit too short for, you know, a lot of felling, limbing, bucking tasks. And I think even for carpentry, even though it was functioning pretty well, uh, particularly with that broad, straight um, bit edge, um, I do feel that a side axe would actually perform better and be more accurate. So it is a bit of a hybrid, and I personally don't think this would replace um, either of these other two axes as a, a one-tool option for bushcraft. Um, I know some people have done so, so I definitely would be interested to hear what other people's opinions are, how they found them. They're fairly commonly available and, you know, they're good quality axes at a reasonable price. So I think a lot of people have them. I guess the only advantage this has over something like a side axe is you just can't get hold of side axes. I don't think they're readily available. I think they you probably have to find them on the second hand market and, you know, who knows what condition they are in. So in that sense, something that is dedicated for carpentry, this is obviously a good option. But um, I think if you had the option to have a side axe, that would be better for carpentry. And then I think for bushcraft, a boy's axe or forest axe is definitely a better option. And then for carving, obviously a dedicated carving axe is going to be much lighter, easier to use and dedicated to the job. So I'm not too sure is this, you know, what, what, what would you use this for? I think if, if people have opinions, I'd love to hear, you know, what other people think. Um, I am so far yet to be convinced on this one. Well, I hope that was of interest to some of you folk out there. Um, it was definitely an interesting sort of thought process that I went through. You know, could this be turned into a one-tool bushcraft axe? For me, the answer at this point in time is no. Um, but, you know, I'd definitely be interested to know what you guys say. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.